Hey everyone, Sharkard here, and in this video I want to go over how to build your account the most effective and efficient way to get the most powerful bonuses you can right from the start. Only there's a few mistakes I see people make. The first is trying to build multiple characters at the same time. Your resources will be way too depleted if you build multiple characters at once, so just focus on one character, especially at the start. Secondly, if you're just starting out, you'll want to build a main DPS character and have them carry you through most of the game. Remember, we're only building one character at the start, so pick whoever you like the best. If you don't know which characters are suitable as main DPS, I'll put some on the screen right now. That way you can pick the character you like the most to level and focus on. Another mistake I see people make very often is using the wrong priority system when building a character. People will usually raise a character's level first, and really that's the last thing that you want to do. It's weird, I know. In other games you want to raise a character's level first to make them stronger, but character level is not a priority on just about every character in the game. There's a few exceptions, but there's other priorities that you want to focus on. Tier list. Before we get started though, honestly, like Genshin Impact is not a hard game, so play wherever you want. If you're a waifu husband player, be the waifu husband player. If you like a character, play them, enjoy them, love them. If you have a different opinion than I do, leave, leave a compelling argument in the comment section down below. I would love to know. And hey, you might change my mind. Sino. Ah, oh, Sino, man. Okay, Sino, it, I did pull for Sino. And I did pull for the, the, the staff thingy. And I'm gonna be really honest with you guys. Sino is one of the characters that I really regret pulling. I will put him- Oh, this is such a terrible start of the video. Let me explain. He, he's he got the looks, you know? Like, he really charmed me with, with the looks and the and the design and everything. I, I, I loved his design. I think his design was amazing, man. Like, and I was so excited for Sino because Sino was like in one of the very first Genshin Impact trailers. And everybody, when everybody was like speculating and everything, I was so excited for him, man. First of all, the Scarab thing. Collecting Scarab for his ascension is just very painful. In today's beta, a new Dendro character got announced. Her name is Kirara, and by the time she'd come out, she'd be the fifth Dendro character to release in four patches. So one could definitely say the pool for Dendro characters is getting a bit saturated, despite the element being relatively young. In this video, I'll be analyzing what we know about her kit, and I'll make some assumptions regarding her potential role on several themes. Note that we're still missing some important information, like particle generation and internal cooldowns, so I will keep that in mind and I will mention where that additional info could bring more upside for her kit. Kirara is a defensive-minded character, with some offensive value on top of that, so she joins Yayao and Baiju in the niche for Dendro teams. While Yayao and Baiju's defensive properties come from the most part from their healing capabilities, Kirara is a full send HP scaling shielder through her elemental skill. Much like the Iona, she has a tap and hold version of her skill, which impacts how durable her shield will be. Usually, when there are two different versions of a skill, the correct way to use it mostly depends on how well the cooldowns line up with the team rotations. Kirara comes with a 8 seconds cooldown on her tap version, and a 12 seconds cooldown on her hold version, and Hey guys, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Hoping 2023 is going well for everyone so far. So, now that version 3 is well underway and the Dendro element has been thoroughly researched, as a follow-up of sorts to the top 5 strongest teams video I made last month, I wanted to make an updated list on the top 10 best characters that everyone should have, or at least aim for depending on what your situation is. It should come to no one's surprise that Genshin has a lot of powerful characters, each with their own unique purposes and niche that can perform at or even above the same level as anyone on the main list. But to keep things a bit more streamlined, I came to the conclusion that the honorable mentions, while very powerful, are not as multi-purpose. Either way, if you have the means and wherewithal to obtain them, then you should very much do so. 
Fischl is a long-standing veteran of Genshin. As one of the game's first characters way back in version 1, she was a stable choice for many players as we navigated through the early game and its limited selection. While in the beginning, she more or less served as an on-field auto attacker, Fischl has quickly and seamlessly transitioned into the role of an off-field damage dealer. Thanks to her elemental skill and burst making use of her trusty familiar Oz, Fischl has, to my knowledge, the highest electro application in the game thus making her a prime candidate for any reaction-focused team composition like Taser, Catalyze, also known as Quicken, and Soup, though her DPS uptime is nothing short of extraordinary considering her 4-star rank. The advent of Dentro further necessitates an Electro Spammer, so you'll find plenty of use for her, that is, if you're intent on going Electro-focused comps. On the subject of being a long-standing veteran, arguably the oldest playable character in the game according to Canonical Age, Zhongli is someone that I don't think anyone really considers Tier 0 anymore but is still a worthwhile mention. He really has only one main job, shield. Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. It's about time that we had a DPS showdown, and this time it's going to be a battle between the biggest 5-star brains in Genshin Impact, Tignari, Alhaitham, and Nahida. So let's familiarize ourselves with the combat-ready scholars of Sumeru and their builds. Throughout this video, my Giga Omega brained Alhaitham is using the Light of Folier Incision at Refinement 5. He is using the Gilded Dreams for most of it, and he's at Constellation 6, and his talents are triple crowned. Yes, this was on the media server, by the way, where I have no impulse control when it comes to resources. Thinking of who's next leads us to the omnipotent Archon brained Nahida. It's notable that her talents are only at 9, 12, and 12, so she is missing a few percentage points of her overall damage output. And last but certainly not the unfluffiest is our fluffiest eared brained Tignari. He is using either the Gilded Dreams or the Wanderer's Troop, depending on the situation. His talents are also only at 9, 12, and 12, so we can see that where I do use my Alhaitham, Alhaitham has a small edge over the other two based on his talents. How else are we going to start this off besides by murdering our cute and innocent Regisfine friend? 